six o'clock and I just let someone else into the to the meeting and I will start by um, reading our um, common script now that as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Um, in accordance to Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone, video, or other electronic means. We are currently using the Zoom platform for this remote meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired participate in this meeting. You can um, find out how to get into the Zoom meetings either by looking at the information on the posted, just a second somebody else wants to get in, um, the posted agendas are going to the town website or request uh, specific emails from the town clerk. Um, so that said, we will um, um, ask if there are any additions to the agenda, tonight's agenda. Uh, yes, I have an addition. Uh, what is it, Norm? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, this is regarding, uh, as the rec director, uh, I'm trying to organize uh, some Halloween festivities, and I want to talk about uh, uh, A, COVID protocol, and then uh, B, uh, uh, organizing an, uh, actually a series of events uh, around the gazebo um, for the 30th and 31st. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else have an addition to the agenda? Um, I'd like to add an executive session to um, continue discussion about an employee issue and add that. Um, and that said, I guess we'll move on with the minutes from the prior meeting of September 28th and I read them and they seemed um, seem correct, and I didn't find any corrections. I'd move to adopt those. And I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I don't see Joan here yet, so maybe we'll see if she comes in later for her updates. But let's, um, I guess we'll just go right into Norm. You want to talk to us about what you're, what you're thinking? Yeah. Um, I'm actually, well, I'm coming in as Barbara Shenton. That's weird. And uh, let me turn some video so you can see my pretty face. Um, okay. I'm, <laughs> oh, back. There it is. I'm with it here. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, we, we've been talking uh, with other rec directors, uh, primarily um, Linda Anderson in uh, Hancock. Uh, she's organizing a multi-town, sort of a Quintown uh, series of events. Um, actually posted them on our website. Um, there's really three big events we want to do. Uh, we want to do a, sort of a Halloween reverse parade, um, which is very similar to what we did as a reverse parade for 4th of July, uh, where um, on 4th of July, we had like little stick people standing by the side of the road and basically cheering on all the cars. Um, at, the, at this point, we're going to have stick um, Halloween characters, you know, spooky people, funny people, whatever anybody wants to make. Um, and then they're welcome to, uh, you know, put their people out on the green uh, or the, the park um, and the other towns will be doing the same. Um, also anywhere along the highway. Um, and that will go from uh, October 30th through November 1st, the whole weekend, Friday through Sunday. Um, and then on uh, Friday evening, we'll have a pumpkin lighting 
Uh, we've done this in the past, I think. I think Katie Landwehr uh, did it. Um, you know, just get a bunch of kids or families together and light their pumpkins and set them up around the monument. Um, we we were talking about food, but I don't think that can really happen with uh, all the COVID protocol. You know, bringing usually they brought in cider and donuts, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and then on the 31st, uh, we're thinking about um, what to do for Halloween. Um, again, we got the COVID thing going. So I wanted to ask you guys, is, is Halloween, the door-to-door -door trick or treating going to be sort of outlawed this year? Well, I don't know if you've gotten directives from the state. Um, but in lieu of that, I, I was thinking, um, well, Again, all the towns are, are going, are, are uh, creating these events where the kids can just um, show up and get bags of candy. Like in Hancock, they're, they're going to have a zip line, and somebody with uh, vinyl gloves will put a bag of candy on the zip line and, and wheel it to the little kid, you know, 30 feet away, very COVID safe. Um, I was thinking something like a big tube, a big PVC tube. Somebody with gloves throws a big bag of candy through the PVC tube, and the kid has a, a bag and never touches anything. So, so there's a way we're trying to come up with ways to do it without, uh, you, you know, um, you, you know, following protocol. Basically, um, we I was thinking about <clears throat> maybe if, if there is no trick or treating, that people that wanted to. The, give candy at their doorstep could possibly drop off some candy maybe at the town office in a big box so for a couple uh couple days in advance um maybe a group of us could um organize the candy into bags you know all the uh, donated candy and uh kind of create a thing for the the kids uh regardless we, we, we'd sort of have an environment around the gazebo. We have stuff from uh, Pierce Hall. Pierce Hall's going to be um, not uh, not having its event uh, because of COVID. You know, not no serving food or anything. Um, so we'll be able to maybe take some of those lighting and decorations to the gazebo and create a little environment for someone so for the kids to have fun so you know if they can't go door to door trick or treat um norm so I, I welcome what you guys have to say uh norm yeah uh, speaking as someone who lives at trick or treat central right on main street there on the corner of the park um i have mentioned this to a couple of my neighbors over the phone and they all would much prefer having something on the park they don't feel comfortable doing the food, they want to do it next year, if, if, if at all possible, giving out candy because they like it, but they feel this year maybe not a good idea. So I know, I don't believe that it's been like banned or anything by the state or something. Dune, could, Dune and Patty and, the, and Frank could tell you, but um, I just was thinking myself, just the, the scuttlebutt on the street, so to speak, that I've heard from neighbors is they'd much prefer to have that off them, but they would be willing to donate some candy and stuff if needed. So I don't know, that's that's just what I've heard. There's been no directives from the state that I know, of, but I know a lot of municipalities have spoken up and um, taken it off the table for this year and saying no, no trick or treating, just because um, yeah. it's probably not a good idea this um, in this environment. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of orchestrating, you know, dosing the kids with candy. Um, I don't know if, you know if that's how important that is or not. I guess that's that would be up to uh, parents. It seems to me, in my thought, the whole process of, of going house to house and, and wandering around with all the other goblins is a big, big part of Halloween. And I don't know if you want to just um, reduce it to getting a bag of candy. But that's, right, that's my yeah. thought. What do you what do you guys think? I, I don't know, actually. I, I think it is a, uh, an issue that we have to think about. 
I mean, if they wanted to have some sort of giveaway, you know, they have the the farmer's market set up there. Like, so if they did something along that line where they, you know, had one way in, one way out kind of thing and went through different little stands like the farmer's market sets up, then you might be able to do something like that where they could get candy at one spot but they're going to have to be social distance and i'm not sure you can get that through yeah it's, it's going to be um kids running around um it, it, as far as what you said dune is it just make it sort of a one-time thing i mean we we would like to create an environment and i've been working at pierce hall for years and you know maybe with a little light show decorations and just families getting together, um, you know, although they're six feet apart, there, there is sort of a, a chance for kids to, you know, they're just not gonna show up and get the candy and go home. They're, they're sort of, yeah. there'll yeah. be social interaction. Um, and we will try to find devices to keep them, uh, you know, entertained. Um, um, Arm, how about a go. costume? Maybe it, maybe one idea might be a costume contest or something. Because I know when my kids were growing up, obviously getting the candy was fun and a big part of it. But they really loved planning their costumes ahead and showing off their costumes to the other kids when they were going around trick or treating. And when they'd come home, they'd be telling me all about, oh, you should have seen, you know, and tell me all about what other kids were wearing. And somebody had a really cool costume. So I don't know if that's that's a possibility. Um. Yeah, yeah, we could have different categories, uh, possibly. Um, that would mean we need more prizes, but uh, that, that is definitely a possibility. Come up with events like that. Um, uh, sure. <laughs> I mean, a lot of costumes involve masks, don't they? Ah, That's right, the masks are pretty made. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you know, like little, little things like uh, with those little glow-in-the-dark um, necklaces and stuff, you know, people can... We can give out those and you know they can run around to that stuff um, that's always kind of fun so it would be a it would be a thing you know a bunch of spooks on the park running around i mean it is it, it's it is up to the parents to you know police them a little bit and make sure that they are um you know socially distancing or do what they have to do I want to bring um, Amy Braun into it. I, I've contacted her along with Yolanta, um, the uh, uh, after school uh, person. So uh, I'm trying to integrate the school with it and, and they sort of know all the rules and know, you know, they, they know how to deal with these protocols in the school environment. So I kind of want to carry that into this park environment. I think weather has to be a consideration too, and we can't plan it this far ahead. Um, I've, I've been listening only because mm -hmm. I haven't made a decision about the hardware yet. Um, the hardware has a tradition of giving um, Halloween candy out. Um, and we normally during the week close at six and, and stay open to about 730 because it's month end and I got to do statements anyway. And so um, we would run open until about 7.30 and, and give out candy for trick-or-treating. Um, we uh, were planning on not changing that. We're still going to do that, except uh, Halloween's on a Saturday and we close at four. <laughs> so now we would be open like two, three hours later if we wanted to cover the, the Halloween rush. That's, that's more of the issue of what we have right now. Um, so I don't know... Um, if the businesses um, planned on still giving out. I, I, that, that is actually one of the elements that I didn't mention. We, we want to do the same kind of thing that we did over the 4th of July, um, which is invite businesses to offer specials. If they have any special that, you know, if it's a restaurant, if they have something on the menu or whatever, um, they can contact us and we can put their specials are on a flyer, so um, the businesses Laura, are integrated. Remember at our rec committee meeting, we talked about how the trick-or-treating type stuff on Halloween should be from 2 to 5 in the afternoon? Yeah, we're, we're looking for an earlier one for trick-or-treating, like uh, largely daytime. 
And that could uh, help Patty with her time issue. Yeah. I think something you better do is not put out mixed signals. Yeah. Um, well, it's better, it's better set a line and follow it. Because we're if going you to have an article. Going to have a lot of confusion. We're going to have an article in the paper next week, and also Norm is going to, when everything gets settled after our meeting this Thursday, hopefully everything will be settled then. Then he's going to be um, be uh, making up uh, flyers to send home with both the, with the kids to school and that kind of thing. Yep. The thing and is, if you have some businesses handing out candy, they're probably going to go around to houses and knock on doors. Oh. Yeah, you know, so you're inviting that. So I think you have to set a, a certain thing and that's it. If if we as a town are not going to support a trick or treat, then for this year, because of the COVID thing, then I think we need to make a stand on that. That's my feeling. That makes sense, Frank. Because if we send out mixed signals, it's going to get crazy and everybody would be going around to all the houses again, which is not what we shouldn't be doing, no, I don't believe. No. Yeah. So I think you have to set a, draw a line in the sand and, and come up with some rules and, and figure out how you wanna address it. If you wanna have a, a set time to do the candy thing on the park, that's <laughs> fine, I would think. But I, I don't think you wanna make it, I think the town has to come out with something that says, you know, no trick or treating house to house this year, and then come that out with include, whatever they want to do. You and know, and that would really include businesses too, because that that leads you on to the pattern of going somewhere to get candy versus focusing it on the park. You know, exactly. I don't know how elaborate you'd need to get, even if like how the the um the the farmers market is set up on the arc to the park. If you set it up with the um with the decorations and, and the goblins and such on the park, there could be, you could have, you know, break up the donations of candy into bags and, and um, as kids come by a certain certain um, character, they could pick up a bag of candy there. I don't know if, how, how elaborate we need to get with them. It's up to the volunteers that are doing it, but to, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Frank. I don't, I don't think, Patty, it's a good idea to, to to give out the candy there. You could help, you know, got some bags with the hardware store name on it. That could be the, the donation bags on the park or I don't know. Sorry kids, now, does that mean I, I can't get dressed up either? Cause last year, <laughs> Perella DeVille with a Dalmatian, it was awesome. <laughs> so, oh, you, I heard you were great. You know, why not Why not get dressed up? up. <laughs> I think so, you should get dressed up. I think, I think the whole select board should get dressed up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe the businesses could have a station at the park, a station or a table at the park along the arc in the park pathway. You know, all the businesses could line up and right, do their because thing. It gets, uh, well, I, I don't think Max would do it, but if they trick or treat at Max, Max was giving out candy. I believe Sandy was giving out candy and the Huntington House was giving out candy. So there were, there were a few businesses that were, I think Inner Traditions put uh, something out on their porch. So there, there were probably, a, I don't know, five businesses that, that were giving out candy as long as they were open. So um, it might be good for the board to let the businesses know that we're gonna concentrate on the park, please. Yeah. You know, I mean, not, I don't know. Uh, Dune, I think Dune has a point that, you know, if they give out, you know, if people are going door to door there, they'll keep going. Now that's something I can announce in the flyer. Um, and, and of course that flyer will go to the kids in the school. Um, so the word will get out that way as well. Um, Whatever you guys decide as a select board, I, I you, can yeah. put in the flyer. And, and uh, I'm sure Martha will put in the paper. So yeah, I was just, just wondering if you were gonna be sending the flyer to the, my experience just with where I live is that I get kids from most of the Valley towns and I, you know, I recognize where they live. And so it's possible, I mean, if, I mean, for normal trick or treating. So I'm wondering if you're going to be giving the flyer at least out to maybe in the, the Stockbridge school as well as Rochester, but I don't know if that's. A, a, yeah, actually. Yeah. That's Linda and I have been talking about this Linda Anderson and uh, her, her whole idea here and it really works pretty well with uh, 4th of July is to coordinate and integrate all five towns from uh, down in Pittsfield up through Granville 
and um, we've talked with, we've had Zoom meetings with Martha and uh, some of the other rec directors and other interested people, and we want to coordinate where, where, you know, some people can go from town to town and, and go to these events. Um, that's what uh, Linda was hoping for, where you could, it sounds like Hancock's really going to do it up this year. Um, but she was suggesting within this three hour time period, uh, you know, to go from Hancock to Rochester to see the other, it's almost like a trick or treat in and of itself. You know, there's could be two, three, four events um, up and down Route 100. Um, we're, we're coordinating both our pumpkin lighting events and our trick or treating events at exactly the same time. So, you know, when people get sick of one, they go to the next one. So are you having, you're having the pumpkin lighting Friday night, but you're having the, the trick or treating Saturday afternoon. Yeah, 5.30 to 8.30, I oh, believe is the be pumpkin, pumpkin lighting. So that's like a sort of, it, it may involve maybe, a, you know, older, maybe more parents or older people. It's more, it's sort of like a, uh, a prelude to trick-or-treating well you know? i'm just worried about having any pumpkins left for halloween night um i mean halloween day whatever yeah the doing. idea we're, we're getting to that um only because we, some we would like to, to like if, if anybody doesn't want to keep their pumpkin they would uh they, they could leave them with us and you know i, I would put them somewhere for safe storage for and the, zach Kavakis, who has a has a compost business now is offered i think i heard that he had offered to get rid of any leftover pumpkins yeah, when yeah. halloween is over that nobody else wanted you know he would yeah, so i don't yeah. you know it's something to think about too we don't want to leave a mess on the park so yeah we, we've been planning all these details all these people from five towns it is pretty amazing and uh, <laughs> um you know i, I say you know Let's go for it one way or another, and, and or, you know whatever you guys decide as the Rochester protocol, we'll try to get the word out. You know. I just think you need to really promote no door to door trick or treating. I really honestly think you got to do that. And probably a good way of doing that is by promoting this as an alternative to that and communicate it that way. Right? No, um, probably should have. Um, something in the paper kind of you know I'm, I'm going to be having i'll have something in this article of course about the meeting but next uh, the plan was since we're having our meeting on thursday to make our final decisions i'm on this committee that, that norms on that we would have an article in next thursday the 22nd which should be a full week and two days ahead of halloween mm -hmm. um, to help people plus they would be sending the flyer home with the kids which would have all the definite stuff on it and I think um, maybe on the town website, and, and Norm can tell you, he's got several other ideas for places to put it too. Like I Front do. Porch Forum, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, actually, I actually haven't been on Front Porch Forum much. Um, but uh, actually, yeah, the, the schedule is currently on the website right now, Rochester, right Vermont. And that's going to be the hub for all five towns to get their Halloween information. Um, and again, we'll be sending a flyer to the school um uh, you know if, if you guys decide no trick-or-treating i can put that front and center right on the website well i think we kind of made that decision there i think i think so i think okay. that's the way to go and you know i can see events where you can you know give out candy along that and if the businesses want to contribute to that that would be where to go with that i think but you have a, a set time where you do that and we promote no uh, door to door and use it like Dune said uh, in lieu of no door to door you're what you're doing you know to promote that that way I, I think that's kind of the way we have to handle it yeah so the the um so the application for the park use and has got three points it's um to do the reverse parade action, the decorating on the park, and then on the 30th, the jack-o'-lantern writing, and then what we've talked mostly about, the 31st, the um, trick-or-treat event, the alternate event, which um, I, I guess I would um, amend this to say that that is um, promoted as an um, as a consolation prize or anything to 
um, promoting the, the lack of door-to-door -door trick or treating that there will be um you know some um orchestrated um safer events you know around the park uh, and, uh, and um, part of the announcement would be because you can't give out candy and trick-or-treating uh can you please donate that candy to us so we can make up some the monsters on the park who will distribute it safely right and norm when we have that article in next week we can always put your no your name and phone number or whoever else wants to volunteer maybe linda as the person to call if people want to make donations or whatever sure yeah. sure uh, i was hoping uh, is, Ju is julie here Ju uh would Julie be okay with having um, uh, like a big box at, at the town office and have people come to the town office and drop off bags of candy if they wish? Yeah, we could we could do that. Can we uh, pay our taxes and candy? <laughs> yeah, now I know where to go if I, if I get hungry. But the hardware too, because people all have to wear masks when they come into the hardware, so that yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, Martha, you may you may want to run that a couple of weeks if you're going to be the 22nd, but maybe the 29th too. Um, they won't let me run the same thing twice, but maybe I can make a shorter version for the 29th. Yeah, that would be great. I think it's I think it's something we have to do to make sure that people are aware. I don't want people going around town knocking on people's doors. Well, it's, I mean, as much as I wish everybody in town read the Herald, they don't all read the Herald. But, and so he, that's why Norm's got other ideas too. Mm, like yeah, that's good. I, I, think so I definitely will. We, I think the more we hammer it home, the better we are. So yeah, the safer. Yeah, I will be able to go. I, I got some people on the PTO. I, I, I'll send them flyers and they're really good at uh, getting them through the Facebook uh, conduits. Uh, so I think the word will get out uh, kid wise. That's why I suggested sending the flyers home with the kids at the school at our, at our first meeting because I thought that's that's obviously our focus group and if they bring the flyers home and show their parents, then if their parents are too busy to read the paper or something, at least they saw that. So. Exactly. So I guess I would um, move to approve the application for use of the town park for for these events, um, and. Um, with the addition of that these um these events are specifically the one on halloween is um folded into a communication of the um the um no door-to-door -door trick or treating this this halloween sure. so um do i have a second uh, I second that. I, I just don't. I just don't know when we say no. I mean, uh, we do not recommend it. I mean, we're saying no. That we're not. We're not going to have somebody policing the area. But no, I can second that. Yep. I hate this. Yeah. All right. Frank, you all right? I, I can put yeah, I'm okay with it. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yep. But but we're we are going to allow Santa Claus to come to town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still with my grandma on that one. <laughs> only Hall Hall only Halloween characters. <laughs> uh, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll put some language in uh, the website tonight, and maybe you guys if you get a chance have a look and see if it's worded right. If you have a better suggestion, let me know. Um, as far as to, I, I would figure out we sort of have to um, delicately tell people they can't trick or treat. There's right. A, I, I think you have to be good them. about it. I mean, do the best we can. Yeah. I'm just going to close, just leave my lights off and, you know, yeah. I don't know what else to do. Don't answer the door. Don't exactly. The door, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But I, I figure some people might be really into it and, you know, want to. But I mean, a lot of people don't like to do what they're told. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I like that you're bringing back the tradition of the jack-o'-lanterns on around the monument. It's been a while since I've seen that, and that's always kind of yeah. Fun. I was going to say we did that when my kids were little, and I remember they really liked that a lot. So I think it'd be fun to do it again. Yeah. And that was done by uh, Zeus Larry, athletic director. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
Apparently, yeah. there's supposed to be a, uh, you know, every town is doing it, or at least three or four towns. And um, I'm going to, they're going to take pictures and post, uh, we're going to post them on the websites. And uh, apparently, uh, we're going to have a little vote off for the best set of pumpkins. <laughs> well, thank you. For your time first. spirit and Go. get out there and vote for Rochester's pumpkins. Okay. Right. All right. For uh, so um, now for something um, less um, exciting, but uh, we have a, a, a application for a permit for driveway construction um, from Ray and Cheryl Harvey on Town Line Road. Where is it? And that's um, I know where that where that said. I haven't talked with Cooter about this, but I think this is um, pretty easy to approve. There's already um, uh, an informal um, driveway there. They're, they're just going to formalize it and put a culvert in. So I, I think I'd um, move to approve that one. I second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, boy, that seemed really quick compared to the Halloween one. Well, that's still <laughs> run, that still runs by Cooter anyway, correct? Um, well, he's uh, no. The select board is the one that approves the driveway cut. We just that the uh, um, with the advice of the um, road foreman. Good. Okay. Yeah, but that's that's a straight stretch. There's no curves there, and it's, it's like I said, it's already um, kind of. That's empty. the old Gil Met lots, I guess, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, we've got um, a. Um, a maintenance contract for the town tax mapping. I uh, see we lost the guy that we um, that put together the current one, and I guess he's retiring. And where did I print that? No, it's on my other computer. And it's something that needs to happen. I don't know if we um, have um, Julie. Has there been much? Um, options out there it's not something that's big enough to that we need to put out to bid we're talking about seventeen hundred dollars or seventeen fifty right and, um, and um is this a, a company that you think is actually going to stick around for a while it's kind of disappointing that the um the fellow we went with last time decided that he's done all of a sudden right he, this company here is out of new hampshire so it's close by and uh, they provide services for many of the towns in Vermont. Yeah. So they've made an application, Julie, or something. And what's the name of the company here? Uh, it's CAI Technologies. Is that like capital C, capital A, A, capital I? Correct. OK, thank you. And they're out of Littleton, New Hampshire. And they're keeping their, uh, for this year, they said they'll keep everything the same as what um, previous um, amounts were 1750 for the maintenance service and then um, yeah. So maintenance services is basically any modifications or adjustments and I guess that deals with the um, transfers of title if people buy and sell properties. Correct. Yeah. That, that and if any um, new tax or any new surveys come in uh, they'll get added to the list and is this this is something that we have to do every year that's not something that we can skip a year and because they're talking about the data um ending this march you know the year before then so we're already half a year beyond that time i just didn't know if this is um i guess this comes into play for setting our tax rate for um, the grand list for the tax rate next year right correct right this follows, this follows the listers. Um, their taxation date is April 1st. Okay. So it's everything as of 331. And that's that's where the listers start lodging the properties. And then they actually start their new year April, after yeah. April 1st. So I think it just follows the listers. Yeah. So I think it's, um, I think we have, um, I'd move to approve this, the contract. I second it. And all in favor? Nice. Right. Okay. All right. Um, so we have some 
um, proposals for modifying the speed ordinances in town and on um, Bethel Mountain Road. And um, this is something that if we approve this, then we have to post it and for what, 60 days? But then I think there people have up to 40 days to um, um, contest it or, or um, ask for um, more information or petition against it. The, um, I think we should put this on the back burner. We basically, what how this came about was uh, the Windsor County Sheriff wanted some clarity in a couple of our roads. And we weren't sure, I know I talked with Julie about it, and we weren't sure how the process worked on how we amended it. And he came into the office and looked through our ordinances and found the places where we need to to upgrade so that when he writes a ticket, he's got a foolproof uh, plan so that it's kind of, you know, that it's it will the work. judge will accept it. Yeah. In other words, so it'll, you know, gain us a little money there. He said, and it's and it's just a foolproof system. So, um, I we just got this information and I I just soon. Uh, study it a little bit so we can write it out properly and make sure we're doing the right things. Yeah, because um, there we is do some... have ordinances in place already. Is this just you pointed out some? Yes, these are just amendments point. to the ordinance, basically. Right. right. Um, but to do that, we have to warn it a certain way. And after we do approve it, I think we have 14 days to uh, to make sure it's submitted to the public. And then they can, you know, they can nix it or whatever. But right. I'd, I'd like to look at it for next meeting, really. And then maybe I can get Nancy to help me a little bit. We can work. Would you be willing to do that, Nancy, to see where we can plug that ordinance in? Yes. Okay. Yep. The, the other part of this, too, is um, once, the or, once it's written, uh, Susan Senning from the VLCT attorneys, she suggested that it um that you have it reviewed by either a town attorney or by vlct to yeah. you know just make sure everything is worded correctly to hold up so if i said that you decided to look at the issue further before bringing it to bringing it up to a vote or something i mean is the board voting on it do you have to have a vote on it at a public meeting we or have to vote at it on a, on a public meeting and then it's um presented to the public for a, a, a fairly good amount of time, I think, and they to um, to comment on it. Yeah. I remember when we did the this or I remember when this was going into effect, I, I think there were two uh, open public meetings with lots of testimony pro and con back and forth, especially about the Bethel Mountain Road section when we dropped it down to 25. Um, yeah, it was a it was a three or four month before it before it would go through um, because of all of the meetings and hearings and the legalities of it. So I I think that what we have here um, was all done correctly, but uh, I I so I don't know what the sheriff is well, asking it's just about. A couple of sections that aren't spelled out in the ordinance itself, and one of them is the is the main town from the entrance to town to the end of the fire department. He oh, read yeah. it through and, Post and it it's now. a 30 mile thing. And he, he wants to make sure that we've got it right. And so I want to research it to make sure that we're doing it right. Mm -hmm. And what he wants is, is not already in there. And I haven't had time to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this, did, this does, this covers specific roads um, and it doesn't, doesn't really cover townwide, um, like the townwide speed limit and um, whoever is going around putting stickers on our speed limit signs in the hollows, uh, changing. Know, they realize limit. that by doing that, they're going to make tickets unenforceable. So they're actually, um, by putting stickers on the town speed limit signs, um, thinking it's cute to lower the speed limit, they've actually rendered the tickets un unenforceable that would be written on those roads. So they're actually um, having the, the opposite effect that they would think they're having. Yeah, correct. I believe also if you tamper with the sign, it voids the sign so it defaults back to whatever the town speed limit is, which is like 40. 
So, so they just are <laughs> speed limit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're not doing anybody any favors, whoever is doing it. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, so yeah. I, I agree that this is, this definitely is something to um, research further and, and let's table that for now. Yeah. Fine by me. All right. Um, is Joan made it in here or she has not? For, I don't know if, well, the only, the biggest updates that we have from her is that there is not a lot of money out there for, um, for road projects. Surprise, surprise. And we'll, um, I guess, pick that up again next year, but it doesn't look like we're um, moving very quickly on the um, Nason Brook project and um or the um well we'll see but that's that was the gist of the communication she gave us um last week mm -hmm. um this coming wednesday um our one year anniversary of the bethel mountain road project was october 11th last sunday mm -hmm. um and it was part of the contract to do a a, a one year uh, walk through kind of like our, our warranty is coming up or something um, so we're we've got that scheduled with uh, myself cricket and Brian Breslin from uh, Du Bois and King to do Wednesday um, and we're meeting at the town office at one o'clock if anybody else wants to um, walk up Bethel Mountain Road with us you're 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 welcome to join in we're really just trying to walk up and um, see if everything's stable and make notes of things that are not yeah. stable which I believe that there is a spot or two that may need to be noted um, just so that if something were to happen, the state would say, oh, we're responsible for that too. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, uh, just an update on the town office. Um, I've been cleaning out down there. The sheriff took a few things from there, but they weren't worth anything. He just wanted to destroy them because they had numbers on them uh, that he didn't want to get out to the public in any way. So I told him to take them and destroy them. So they, uh, other than that, I have took one load to the dump. I'm probably going to do another. I'll probably do the office chairs that are junk. Uh, this next week, uh, so I'll, and I took the heat out of the garage, and I'll cap it off so that it's capped off now the heat part. But I gotta insulate the the vents so there's no cold air in there, and I gotta get Gopher or somebody in there to drain the water and put some valves on that water system. So, and then I'll just continue to keep trying to get it clean where we can put the stuff in there. Yeah. Use it for storage. All right. Thank you, Frank. Yep. Um, boy, I think that we've pretty much covered what's on the agenda tonight. Um, Dune, one question. You said yeah. you were going to end by having the board go into executive session to discuss an ongoing employee issue. Yep. Um, do you plan to make any sort of decision that I should know? No, that's um, part of uh, what we're talking about is that we're not ready to make any decision. Okay, so. okay. I just wondered, yeah. I was going to ask you to let me know if there was yeah. something. Yeah, no, we in the paper. will if it comes, when it comes to that point. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, thanks everybody. Um, we'll see you around town. Thank you. Have a good okay. evening, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Good, Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Norm, are you trying to say something? If you are, you're um can't tell. If you're talking, we can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> Norm, you're muted. <laughs> Still muted. <laughs> I guess he's um maybe he's talking to somebody else. I think we're 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 done here. All right. Um, I can um, can um, close everybody else out here. Yeah, right. that, that, that sticky mute button. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Did you have something else that you wanted to say there, Norm? I did. I wanted to show you what I have for the uh, COVID nineteen. I wrote something up here pretty quickly. Um, if I can exit full screen, I'll I'll read it to you. I was trying to share the screen.
and I, I, I was disabled. But anyway, um, uh, I'll read this to you. All door-to-door -door trick or treating in the town of Rochester is canceled this year due to COVID-19. As an alternative, the following events will take place. Uh, please donate candy to uh, that that you would have given out for our townwide COVID-free event. Drop off bags of candy at the town office or the hardware store so that uh, the candy will be re redistributed at the event. Kind of wordy, but- uh, That's a good start. <laughs> good yeah. good yeah. start, okay. Um, All right. Good, uh, take care. All right, uh, thanks Norm. Thank you, yep. Yeah, appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Good night. All right, and I'm going to- um, Okay. Yep, I'm working on them. I think did I um I think that I you took Patty yeah, out. I took Patty out instead of Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs>